What is Aimpoint Green Reading? Recently you'll have heard a lot about it, but what are the facts and what are the myths? Let's do it. Come on, let's do it now. That's how good the process is. And they come back in and what they've done is they look from both sides and now they're not the wide anymore. Oh, I'll tell you what, all right. Hi everyone, James Robinson here guys. First things first, first things first, I'd like to welcome, who's running away? Chris, how are we? Very good, yourself? I'm very good, thank you. So Chris, um, we'd love to have done this video outside, yeah. but I'll cut now to a clip of outside. Snowy. It's, yeah, it's not ideal, mate, is it? So we're in here in the studio, it's lovely and warm. Um, and we've actually managed, because aim point's all about green reading, and we've managed to... Uh, put the slope on. We've put the slope on, exactly. Yeah. Um, so Chris, first things first, I suppose, if people are new here, please take two seconds to hit that subscribe button below. Leave us a like if you do enjoy this video. And also hit those comments below. What have you heard about Aimpoint? What do you think about it? And we're going to dispel a few myths and tell you a few facts about it today. Also, we've set up a few clinics, haven't we? Correct. So yeah. we're going to throw that at you in a few minutes' time. So if you do want to book in for one of those, we are both Aimpoint instructors. We have been, I've been about three years now. I've been yeah quite a while so we are going to set some of those up for 2021 um, but Chris first before we kind of go into all of that just talk us through what you know about Aimpoint what you've been coaching with it on tour and things like that and yeah. go into a bit so Aimpoint's been used by some of the best players in the world quite a few number ones now so Justin Rose has been a long time user of it ladies tour Lydia Co uses it um, obviously at the moment the biggest one who's using it is DJ or his caddy is using that Austin. to reinforce Austin. Yeah. Thank you. James. Brother, I believe. Golf um, <laughs> Oh, is it his brother? Though? It's his brother, mate, yeah. Um, so I only know because I had a drink with him in the Jigger Inn when it was the Dunhill. Social butterfly. <laughs> all the time for a beverage. Right, so yeah, a lot of players are using it now and the reason why they're using it is mainly for feedback. So I've used it a lot when I was on tour with players just to give themselves better feedback. So they're picking a point here. If they like to visualise the curve, you can also use it for that. So it's not just for people who pick a point, but more importantly, it gives you the feedback of why you've missed. So you can break it down. Okay, and I can move on because how many people out there miss a put, don't know why they've missed a the put, and if it's on the first hole, it's going to be a long 18 holes. They have a lot of pull because the confidence has gone. So what I find with this system is it gives people a little bit more confidence. We all want confidence on the putting green. We're then able to hold more pulls. Okay. So one of the big things that people do say about Aimpoint, and this is probably the biggest myth, is that it takes a long time. It takes longer. Yep. I do think that that does derive from somewhere. I'm not going to say that... It takes no time at all because if you read a green, it does take time. It takes a couple yeah. of about 20 seconds, 18 seconds, do we say? For a normal read. For a normal read? You'd like to say so, but on tour, you see people take a lot longer. A lot longer. And I do think if you have seen someone who does take long at it, they've not been taught it properly, probably not been taught it by a certified aim point instructor. Such as ourselves. Going into that, if you do want to come to a clinic, either here at Waterfront, which will be outside um, on the putting green because it won't be snowing like it is today, or at Fixby Golf Club, we are running them. We're both going to do them together. The dates are up on screen now. If you do want to get in, they are first come, first serve, and I would expect them to fill up quite quickly, generally, because aim points. There's an aim point clinic followed by nine holes as well. It is. I, I knew that. I did. I did. Just I, admin man. Cameraman, admin man. So generally, yes, yeah, so it doesn't take that long, Chris. And a lot of people, that will be the reason why they maybe don't like it as much or they, they feel a prejudice about it. So um, what else do you want to kind of explain about it? Um, again, it's pretty quick, but like I said before, it works for both people who like to pick a point next to the hole, for people who like to pick a point just in front of them, or for people who like to visualise the curve. So it works for everybody. It's not just set for people who would be a linear learner who would just like to see things in straight lines. And that's one of the myths. People like to say, oh, I like to feel it and see it going in with that and stop it. But it doesn't. And we're going to show that now of how we can do it both ways. So, like I say, the biggest thing I see with people is they think it takes too long. But again, if I had this put here, which is around about six feet, I would be coming in here now giving this a rating of how I feel, what, what percentage or what number I believe it is. And I'm going to stop you there, because a lot of people will say, I can't feel it. But if you come to an actual session, we will kind of teach you how to feel it. We'll 
put you through a couple of stages and I've had people who've come for these sessions and said, oh, I can't do it, I can't feel it, I've tried it before, I've watched it on the internet. You can't learn this course on the internet. No. You can't just get told how to do it and then use it. That's why we're probably not going to tell you as much information as you might like in this video no. because it, you can't do it. You'll, you'll get it wrong, you'll take too long, you'll get frustrated and it won't work. Correct, yes. Yeah. So the basis of this is you're going to come in, you're going to feel the slope. If you can't feel the slope, we can work on that. You then here, you give that a rating. From there, I'll rate, relate that to how much break I want. I would line that up now to that point. For me, I use a line. Check that's correct. And I'm now already into hitting that. And I know I've had a lot of practice. A lot of practice. I've got to hold it now. <laughs> um, but that's how quick the process is. So that only took me probably three or four seconds in, double check back to the ball and line it up. So it's not taking a long time. How many times do I see people stand about 20 foot away, get out here, have a look. Don't forget the plumb bob. Plumb bob, <laughs> then come to this side and just have a look because they're stretching the legs. And then behind here. You've always got to get it from the opposite side, haven't you, Chris? And then pull it down again, have a quick word with Dave, what he thinks. I'm surprised you haven't pulled a hammy there, actually. Well, I am fatigued. And then come back in, and what they've done is they've looked from both sides, and now they're not the wiser because from one side it looked right to left, the next side it looked left to right. Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do now. We'll put one of those visual mind boggling things on. Oh, well, I like Yeah, so you'll, you'll know what I mean. So if, if you look at this screen now, guys, we've found a puzzle which is an optical illusion. And that's what a lot of people do see when they read greens. They don't see this puzzle, but they do see an optical illusion. So the field-based green reading technique can be such more beneficial to people like that. Um, and to be honest, to most people anyway, because it just gives you an extra, extra factor, doesn't it? An extra... It's giving you a definite of a number. And then if you, if you miss... Low, a number. A number. <laughs> Sorry. If, if you miss low, then you know exactly why you're missing. You can go and practice on that. So. Again, I've lined this one up now. It's not took me long. I will be able to come in, do my routine, and then from here, open that miss. Oh, I'll tell you what, all day. Right. And so, this boils down to there's there's three things that you need for good putting, isn't there? Correct. You need green read, you need speed, and you need start line. Three things, we're working on the green read, but also we will work on speed, yep. and then you'll get the feedback from the start line. Perfect, so that takes us into another myth that this doesn't work for people who like to hit it firm into the hole. Yeah. You can adjust and you can work on that. If you're somebody who's confident in hitting it three feet past, we can work on that. If you're somebody who's confident or not so confident and likes to dive the ball in, you can also work on that. If it's as a norm, what we like to do, or what I like to do with players, is get it based on a full pass. So mm -hmm. you've definitely got a nice, easy tapping, but also it's a consistent speed every single time. You're not dying one in, then hitting one three full pass, then hitting one a full pass. And I'll tell you what will be a really interesting point. So, and I'll tell you what's quite an interesting point, Chris. If people at home do know what speed they like to put out, do they like to? We've had an outtake there, and I'm gonna, I might leave it, I might not. Do you like to ram it in there? Do you like to die it in there? Do you know, guys? Hit those comments below. What is your optimum green putting speed? It differs for everyone else. There's no right or wrong, but you do need to know. You need to be aware of it. That's another thing which this class will help you with. And we're not trying to just sell a class here. We're trying to kind of put some myths to bed, aren't we? Because I believe in it. I know you believe in it as well. But I, I hate seeing when somebody wins on tour with it, the big roar or free for all about is won because of it. They haven't won because of it, they've won with it. Yeah, and, and some people won't use the full system. So for example, you might just have a feel and then you, you pick how much you think it is. You might just have a feel and you might have it a cup outside the left, have a feel with your feet and you might go, oh, it's a bit more than a cup. And that might be your way of using the system. You might not use it all, but you might use some parts of it to hold a few more putts. And if you hold two putts extra around, well, that's two shots off your handicap, ideal. Yeah. Unless you're in your driver like James Roberts. So. Wow, he's been there, he's done it. Um, are you going to get, are you going to show the guys the, uh, the gradient we've got on this green here today with the old light? Laser. Mm. Thought you might show us that, it was quite cool. So, what we'll do now <laughs> Sorry. is this is on a slope, so I'm going to show you now how somebody who just picks a linear line would look. So, we've got the laser somewhere. Yes, laser time. I was waiting for this. He 
Can you, uh, can you all tell I was excited about the laser? It's quite cool, look at that, that's so cool. It's like back to the future. So again here, just because I know the green and I know the slope, this is where we would have the ball aimed to. So again, for people who visualize a straight line, I would be picking a point here next to the hole, or potentially something a foot in front of the ball. So if you're on a putting green or on a green, it might be an old pitch mark, it might be a leaf, it might be something in front that you can line your ball up to. But if not, at the edge of the hole, this is where we're now aiming. So that is very much for somebody who would pick a straight line. So you could say that's the aim point, Chris. That is the aim point. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was terrible. Here all week. So let's hit this puck now just to show that if I stroke this ball on that line and I start it online with a pace that's a foot pass, that should, famous last words, should go in. Okay, so missed, but I'm able to make, well, I'm able to take even, not make, take feedback from that. So I know why I missed that, because the ball only just reached. So I know that I underpaced that because the ball rolled good. It started on the line that we wanted to. So I know it started down the line of the laser. It turned, but if I was a foot past, that would have stayed higher and it would have gone in. And to be fair, Chris, one of the big Chris, one of the big points that we do discuss in classes, especially which I've discussed in classes with mid handicaps, high handicaps. Now we all know uh, tall percentages from putting. What was that put, Chris? Was that 10, 12 feet? That's 10 feet. Yeah. 10 feet. So what would the average make percentage be from 10 feet on tour, would you say? So from tour it's one in three. So one in three. So if you are you've got to say that's on the best greens in the world with Correct. the best potentially putters in the world. Correct. Um, what would you expect that to be with a mid handicapper? So a mid handicapper, you're probably looking at one in eight. So that's why you missed. I'm joking that's why again. I so, <laughs> but but uh, understanding that you're not going to make them all. Correct. But ideally, you're not going to three put. And that's another thing that we talk through in the classes: your percentages of what you should be expecting to make as you get closer, as you get further away. Because there's too many people who hit it to 15 feet and expect to hold it every time, which. As we know, tour average is going to be one in four from there, so yours is going to be one in ten. Okay. So we start to break down, but you're getting feedback every time. We're trying to get you with confidence. I missed that putt, but I'm not too disheartened because I know exactly why. Shall, I, shall I have a go so we can see one go in? You can have a go, but I'm not that optimistic for you. So <laughs> well, well, I've got the line, haven't I, with the, uh, the old laser. The what speed are we saying? So that would be, no, I'll not do it. But just so people know, you can calibrate things like that to the speed of your greens. So that's another question that people yeah, might have. That was start line, actually. I pushed that. Yeah, so the pace was good, <coughs> but he started his right of the intended line. So that's why I missed it. One in three, so one in two, we'll say there, for tour average. average. Thank you, thank you. So guys, there you go, that was a little bit of a... Where are you going, you? So guys, there you go, that was a quick video on Aimpoint Express. There are quite a few videos on Aimpoint on YouTube at the moment, obviously us being coaches for it, yeah. uh, we thought we'd kind of put our two cents in a little bit. I've taught over 250 people Aimpoint over the last couple of years. I know Chris, you're up there as well, you've taught it on tour, yeah. obviously carried on tour and things as well. So if you would like to come to a clinic guys, um, they're on screen again now. I will put these on all my other social medias as well, I know you will as well Chris. Yeah. Um, we're going to do an Aimpoint clinic followed by a nine hole performance session. Um, that's going to be really good, again based here at here at Fixby, not at Fixby, based at Waterfront and at Fixby Golf Club in Huddersfield. Yeah. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that, Chris. If you haven't checked out Chris Dennis Golf for all your short game needs. I'm sure James has zoomed in on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll zoom back out again now. Uh, make sure you go and check it out because there's some good stuff on there. Um, apart from that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave us a like. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. 